Hi, welcome back to Enzyme Kinetics and Function. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to analyze something that's shown here called a Michaelis-Menten curve or a Michaelis-Menten plot, and then we're going to determine four kinetic parameters for this particular enzyme. The Vmax, the Km, the Kcat, and catalytic efficiency, assuming that the concentration of the enzyme is 3 micromolar. All right, so this is basically a video of showing how you go about doing this kind of estimation. Okay, and it's really important to understand this. If I want to find these four kinetic parameters, I basically have two common methods to do it. The first of which is to use the Michaelis-Menten curve like this, and it's more of an estimation there. However, this is the least accurate of the two methods. Okay, there's another method that you can use called a Lineweaver-Burke plot. And we're going to go over those extensively in a few videos. Okay? The Lineweaver-Burke plot is a lot more accurate, although what it requires is a few um, transformations of the variables, um, but it gives you a much more accurate answer because what you're dealing with is not a hyperbolic curve like this, it's actually a straight line and allows you to more easily calculate these four parameters. Okay, so this is the least accurate method, so it is more of an estimation, and we're going to just go over how you do this analytically on here. Okay, first thing I want to calculate generally always is the Vmax. In fact, you have to do it first on a Michaelis Menten curve. All right, so, so I'm going to imagine that, okay, this starts at 0 0.04, but it goes down to zero essentially. So Initially, you're going to have a point, theoretically, at a substrate concentration of zero and a reaction velocity of zero, okay? So a point zero, zero. And for a Michaelis-Menten plot, you have the rate of the reaction or reaction velocity or initial rate, either one. Sometimes they'll designate this as V naught, okay, on the y-axis versus on the x-axis, you have the concentration of the substrate which they generally will give concentration of S, or if there's a specific substrate, like here it's L-DOPA, which is a molecule, you would see concentration of L-DOPA like that. Um, sometimes they'll just put the generic concentration of S. Okay, so V naught versus S concentration. You look at this curve and it goes up and up and up and up, and you can kind of see it in this region, you can easily see that it's kind of leveling off. Now, if this were a logarithmic curve from, say, calculus or one of your other classes, you might say, okay, as the substrate concentration gets higher and higher and higher, I'm thinking that this will actually go off to infinity. And, in, and at first, in theory, that might make sense. If I was to use an infinite amount of substrate, maybe my rate of reaction would be infinite also. But it turns out that's not true. There's some, there's some rate at which the enzyme can get to where it can't go past that. That's the maximum rate, or the Vmax. Now look at this point where the hyperbolic curve ends. This is where it was able to get to, okay? That's actually not the Vmax, okay? So what I could theoretically do is I could draw a line like this and say, okay, that line intersects that point where the hyperbolic or Michaelis-Menten curve ends, and that's the Vmax. Turns out that's not the case. Instead, what I ought to do is give a little bit of space between the end of the curve and I ought to instead maybe put that line right there. Now you say, well, that looks like it's above the end of the hyperbolic curve, and it is. But it turns out that if you were to actually keep, in, if you were to continue to increase the substrate concentration, you could actually slightly increase the rate. And it turns out that rate might get closer and closer to that line. And it'll never cross that line but it can get closer and closer and closer. And eventually this red line, if I were to continue the Michaelis-Menten curve, would get just basic, so close to the purple line that you'd basically consider them the same uh, point. And that means they converge, and the value that they converge at is the Vmax. So generally when you have a Michaelis-Menten curve, you always do not just put the Vmax where the hyperbolic curve ends. Instead, you're gonna leave a little bit of space here between the Vmax line, or this horizontal asymptote, and the end of the hyperbolic curve. And this purple line is going to be the Vmax. So what I would say to do, and it's really an estimate when you have this, is you look where the hyperbolic curve ends and just go up a little bit. It's really an estimate. You might even pick a number that's more convenient, because I'm looking at this Vmax, 
and to me it looks like about 0 0.105 and the units will be micromoles per minute per liter. I'm just going to say micromolar per minute. Okay. Um, I pick that number just because it's, it's more convenient for me in this problem, but it has to be a little bit above the hyperbolic curve at the end of it. Okay? You'll never pick it right at that black dot. So this I'm going to say is the Vmax, and that's, I'm going to give that as my answer. That's the Vmax of this enzyme, but it's only an estimate. If I wanted to be more accurate, I would have to do a line lever -Burke plot. Okay, now I want to worry about estimating the Km of this enzyme. All right, so how do I figure out Km? Well, let's go back to what Km is, the Michaelis constant. And I went over this in another video, so if you want more review of the Michaelis constant, go back and watch that. The Km is the substrate concentration at one half of the Vmax. In other words, I could say this. To find the Km, what is the concentration of the substrate at half of the maximum rate? So I'm with, I want to find half of the maximum rate. Maybe I have to find that. Well, I know the maximum rate. It's 0 0.105 micromolar per minute. So maybe the first thing I should do is find one half of that maximum rate. And I can use a calculator to figure this out. So I'm going to take 0 0.105 and divide by 2. And I find that half of the maximum rate is 0 0.0525. And it's going to be micromolar per minute. That's half of the maximum rate. Now that's not the Km. The Km is the substrate concentration at that rate. So the substrate concentration at half the Vmax, or this rate, that is what the Km is. So I need to figure out what the Km is. Okay. So how am I going to do that? Well, I just found half of the maximum rate. It's about 0.0525. So that looks to me about right here on the graph, 0.0525. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a line. There's not a lot of room here, but I'm going to go to that point and draw a horizontal line over to where that uh, to where it hits the michaelis menten curve. Then, wherever it hits the curve, I'm then going to go straight down and see where it intersects, where it intersects the x-axis. It intersects is about right there. So now I kind of have to do some eyeballing here to figure out what that concentration is. So here's 0, here's 2. It looks to me like this point right in the middle is about 1. And But the distance between that 0 and the 1 um, that's one, and the distance between the blue dot and the one, it looks like the blue dot is about a third of the way to one. So I'm going to say it's about a third, or I can probably say that that, that concentration, a third is about 0 0.33, we'll say, it's just an estimate, 0 0.33, and it would be in units of millimolar, because the substrate concentration is millimolar. So this is going to be millimolar, and that's millimoles per liter. And that is my Km. So the Km is a substrate concentration. It just happens to be a constant one because it's the substrate concentration always at one half of the Vmax. So that's my Km right there. And that's how you determine Km. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. The Km, the Michaelis constant, is really more of an equilibrium constant. So that's why this K is capital. However, I'm now going to move to calculating something called the Kcat. The Kcat is a rate constant, so it's a lowercase k. Now to find Km, how do I do that? Well, it turns out there's an equation we can use. The Vmax of an enzyme is equal to the enzyme concentration, that is the total enzyme concentration, times the Kcat, the rate constant. So if I want to find that rate constant, I'm going to divide both sides here by the enzyme concentration. I get that the Kcat is the Vmax of the enzyme divided by that total enzyme concentration. Now, it's a rate constant, and we're essentially dealing with a first-order rate constant. So first-order rate constants, they're going to have units of, and this brackets are on the equal sign just means it's in units of. It's going to be in 1 over seconds, or inverse seconds, or per second. So this should be my units. Now because the rate, the Vmax is in units of micromolar per minute, or it's, we'll just say concentration per unit time, and because the Km is concent or excuse me, the enzyme concentration is um, a concentration. If I want the rate units to cancel with the concentration units to give per second, that means that the concentration parts have to be the same. So here's what I want you to notice, okay? 
The V max here looks like it's in units of micromolar per minute, and I gave an enzyme concentration in micromolar. Okay, so it turns out they're in the right units. But had I give had I given you an enzyme concentration in millimolar, then micromolar per minute divided by millimolar would not give per second because micromolar is different than millimolar. But it turns out they're they're the same units here, so we'll go ahead and just use those. All right, the V max is 0 0.105 micromolar per minute, all right? The enzyme concentration total is three micromolar, okay? So let's go ahead and divide that, and notice also that the micromolars here cancel out. So let's see what that ends up being. 0 0.105 divided by three. And that is, I'm getting, this is going to be, let's see, 0 0.105 divided by 3. This is 0, oops, let me do that in green. So this is 0 0.035, oops, that's not per second, right? It's per minute. Now, you're more than welcome to report a kcat this way. This is a kcat. You can report kcats in per minute. However, when you read literature, it's usually per second. So what you're what was more preferable is to convert this to per second. So 0.035, I'm going to put it over minute. So that's still per minute. And now I'm going to convert this to per second. So let's see. So per minute, so one minute has 60 seconds. Here you see the minutes cancel, and so I'm going to take that 0.035 and I'm going to divide that by 60. And what I'm getting is for this enzyme, and this is really not a good kcat, again these are just sort of made up numbers, but I'm getting this is about 5.83 times 10 to the minus fourth per second. That is the kcat of this enzyme. Normally kcats are greater than 1. Okay, so um, this would actually be a very, very, very slow enzyme. Okay, just to let you know, this is a very slow enzyme. Um, in fact, the K-cat, the higher the K-cat is, that, that generally means that you have a faster enzyme. Okay, you have some enzymes that, there's one enzyme I know um, called catalase that catalyzes 40 million reactions per second. So its K-cat would be enormous. Okay, this would be a very slow enzyme, okay, if this was actually real, all right? The last thing I want to do is I want to figure out what the, what the catalytic efficiency is. So what is the catalytic efficiency? So catalytic efficiency, sometimes it will be designated as epsilon there, just as the general symbol for thermodynamic efficiency. Um, this is not a thermodynamic efficiency, but we're going to use epsilon anyways, and the C stands for catalytic. The way you figure out the catalytic efficiency is you basically take the you take the kcat and you divide by the km. Now, one important thing here is to watch out for units. Okay, watch out for units. Okay, notice the kcat that I have here is per second. So let's see the kcat. I'm going to plug that in. Is 5.83 times 10 to the minus fourth, and that is per second. What is my km? My Km is zero, about 0 0.33, and that's in units of millimolar. Okay, millimolar. So let me go ahead and divide this out. My catalytic efficiency, let me see. So this is going to be divided by 0.33. All right, so the number that I'm getting for this, for the efficiency, is 0 0.0011. And around this to 177. Now, because it's per second and you're dividing by millimolar, then this will be mil inverse millimolar inverse seconds. Okay, and that's my catalytic efficiency. Now, the the thing about catalytic efficiency is generally what will happen is you can report it in any units you want. Okay, I've seen some where they'll report it in inverse molar inverse seconds. Um, it can be inverse micromolar inverse seconds. Here I calculated inverse millimolar inverse seconds. Generally, you're just going to report it in the way that's most convenient. Okay, so let's just do a, a sample calculation of how you could convert this. 
All right, so let's suppose I have 0 0.00177. I'm going to go ahead and write these in the denominator, millimolar seconds. So let's see how you would how you would go about transforming the um, concentration units of this. Okay, generally you won't transform the time units because it's in seconds. You generally want the efficiency in second units, okay, or inverse seconds. So let's see how I would calculate this. So let's say I want to convert this to molar. Let's do that. So I know that there are 1,000 millimolars in a molar. Notice here that these millimolar units cancel. So let's multiply this now times 1,000. And this actually might be a more preferable unit that we're getting here. So I'm getting this back. This is 1.77 and this is going to be inverse molar inverse seconds. And this would also be a measure of the catalytic efficiency. It's actually the same number as the same value except I changed the units. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And these are going to be the four kinetic parameters that you generally have to calculate for an enzyme. This is how you calculate them using a Michaelis-Menten plot. Okay, now generally when you do K-cat and catalytic efficiency, for both the methods that we talked about, which are this method and then the line weaver burke plot, which we'll do in future videos, the way you calculate K-cat and, and, and efficiency are the same. The differences for these is how you calculate Vmax and Km. Notice for these, we're just, sort of, we're just sort of estimating. I had to draw this line up here to figure out what the Vmax was, then I find half of that and find the substrate concentration at half the Vmax, and that's my Km. This is a graphical analysis, more or less, and it's less accurate. So the question is, how could you take this data and determine this information more accurately? How could you do that? Okay. Well, the answer is I'm going to do something called a line, a line weaver Burke plot. Okay. And before we end the video, and we're going to eventually move into, um, we're going to move into um, actually looking at line weaver Burke plots. I want to remind you of something. Okay, when we do a Michaelis-Menten plot, okay, and remember for a Michaelis-Menten plot, we're going to get something that looks more or less like that, okay, a hyperbolic curve, right? What you're doing is you're plotting on the y-axis the initial rate of the enzyme in whatever units you want, and then on the x-axis it's concentration of the substrate, and when you do this you should get a plot that looks like this, okay? The line weaver burke plot is a little bit different. Okay, so let me show you more what a line weaver burke plot looks like. Instead of plotting these values to make the Michaelis Menten curve, what we're actually going to do is on the y axis, instead of initial rate or v naught, it's going to be 1 over the initial rate. It's going to be the reciprocal of it. On the x axis, instead of substrate concentration, it's going to be 1 over the substrate concentration or its reciprocal. And when you do this, what you actually should get what you should get is a straight line when you do this. And one thing hopefully you should, you should realize is that when you're trying to be more exact, a straight line is much easier to deal with than a, cur a curvilinear line, like a hyperbolic curve. These straight lines are much easier to deal with, and the reason they're easier to deal with is because you can generate a y equals mx plus b. You know in most of the labs you've done where you have a straight line you want to figure out what the equation of the line is. And it turns out that instead of just doing simple estimations you can actually determine Vmax and Km from the straight line equation that you get after you plot this line. And that's the nice thing about a line weaver burke plot. And that's one of the reasons it makes this method more exact. Okay? This is a much more exact method. Now, it's still an approximation, but it's a much more accurate approximation than what we just did here. So what we're going to be doing more in the next few videos is I'm going to sort of explain to you the theory behind a line weaver burke plot. How do we get from the Michaelis-Menten equation to the line weaver burke equation? And then how we go about doing a line weaver burke plot. That's going to be really important. All right, so I hope this video helped you, gave you a little more intuition on the Michaelis-Menten plot and how we use it to analyze the kinetic parameters of an enzyme. Okay, and just keep in mind what we're doing in the next few videos. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.